allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I guess after coming back from vacation, I move at a slower pace for some reason. <laughs> Um, again, I'd like to welcome you to the meeting. A uh, reminder to silence your cell phones, if you would, please. And the meeting documents are next to Commissioner Kelly over there on the left. And if you do need a listening device, you can contact Robert, and he would be able to help you with that. Uh, Cindy, if we could start. With okay, routine business. business. Item one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Any comments, changes? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Item two is to approve the county commission minutes of March 5th, 2013. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any changes, corrections, or comments? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Item three are bills to be paid in the amount of $340,976.30. Move the bills. Second. A motion and a second. Any comments? If not, those in favor of approving the bills, please, please signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign for no. Uh, motion unanimously passes. Item four, the following reports were received and placed on file in the auditor's office. The Minnehaha County Human Services Report for February 2013. The Minnehaha County Sheriff's Department Report for February 2013. The Minnehaha County Regional Juvenile Detention Center Report for February 2013. And the auditor's account with the county treasurer as of February 28, 2013. Thank you. Those reports uh, are obviously uh, available for anybody's uh, public viewing. Item five is personnel. Item eight is to approve the routine action. I'll move routine action. Second. Second. Any questions or comments for Carrie? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. There are no application for abatement today. Item 7 is notices and requests. Item A is to authorize the county auditor to publish a request for proposals for inmate telephone and video visitation system. I'll make that motion. There's second. a motion and a second. Any comments from the sheriff's department or the warden? As long as you're drinking, I'll make sure you come up front. Let's see if I can uh, elaborate well. Good morning. Good morning, Darren Young, I'm the county jail warden. We've been, uh, our contracts are coming to um, an end with our for inmate phones and for the video visitation. Um, the, the phone ends May 30th, if I recall correctly, and the video visitation is June 15th. So we are looking, and we knew this a year ago when we were putting together the video visitation proposal, we're looking for a, a one-year contract so that we could uh, uh, merge this, con this contract together. Um, it's, it's kind of a trend out there is, is helping do this so that's managing those two uh, technologies together and uh, so that is our our goal is to to do that as well and we put together the RFP and we're ready for it to see uh, what interest there is so thank you Darren are there any questions for Darren <coughs> if I might those those two systems if you will are managed by the same vendor correct currently they are not uh, that's what the intent would but be. But the though. intent would be, <coughs> yes, be managed by, by one vendor. And as far as the cost to the county, I just want to make sure people understand that's a cost that's passed along, if you will, to family and prisoners and uh, we'll call them uh, guests of our system. So yes. it's a clearing house, if you will. Yes. Good. I, I expect there to be <coughs> minimal um, cost to the county when through this process. I can, I, can, I can tell you that when attorneys get collect calls, though, they routinely accept those. So then that gets billed back to us through the voucher. So mm -hmm. if they are billing back their phone charges, which I'm assuming they are. Right. I imagine so. How come the, the 
attorneys always have an exception for yeah. building issues. Exactly. Well, it gets more expensive because they're charging by the hour, too. Yeah, so. exactly. Commissioner Heiberger? Just a question. This isn't a revenue generator for the county. <laughs> it Correct. is a revenue generator. Yes. It is a revenue generator. And I'm just wondering why it's a revenue generator, other because, than to cover expenses. Um, well, that's maybe you want me to handle it? Okay. Yeah, it, it's, uh, I guess that's a, um, traditionally it's been that way. It is, uh, there is some expense and costs to the, the, the uh, county. Um, we have staff that have to monitor the um, phones and have to, uh, for investigative purposes, need to go back uh, for cases and go back and do some investigative work, uh, prepare um, and possibly testify as they're pulling these um, recordings or, or tapes um, to, so that helps cover those costs as well. I would, I would call that not a revenue generator then. I would call it cost. I would, I would say it's covering costs, and that's kind of what okay. my question was. Yeah. So yeah. it covers costs that are incurred because of the system. So thank you. Yes. Commissioner Kelly. Warden, does this either one, whoever gets the bid, will be the remote, they can remote access the visitation? Like from Mitchell, they can call in yes. and do a, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 uh, the RFP calls for uh, the web-based visitation so that users can, uh, can use this from anywhere in the world. Um, this last year, or close to a year that we've had this in, in place, um, I know there has been some some concerns about uh, um, how well it's, it's, it's worked, but there has, there's no question about the technology and the ability for uh, families to connect um, from all over. I had people call me from Miami and Atlanta, and they were going to fly up here and, and visit their um, their loved one here. And I told them, you know, save their save their dime there, get on the internet for 35 cents a minute. They can um, have the same visit they would have a, a free one in the lobby here. So rather than save your plane ticket, and hotel, and meals, and everything else. So but lots of people thank me for um, having the opportunity. Uh, inmates have thanked me because. Their family couldn't travel if they uh, wasn't for this purpose. They'd never see them. So, is there a limited number that can do that at one time, or can? The, well, it's only limited by the number of uh, kiosks that we have. Okay. And, and our current provider so has always said that you know if you get to the point where the, there's a line, they will add more kiosks because that just continues to want to saves sure. us uh, um, a lot of hassle and, and it does continue to. Uh, but it's a real. You know, even somebody from Beersford or Canton or something where there's bad weather, they can still make that visitation. So. Right across town, many people, you know, to bring your, you know, several families, they have several ch young children, and to bring your young children to the jail and try to keep them um, occupied while they're trying to have a, a good visit, as doing it from home where they can continue to play with their own toys at home, even that's a plus right there as well. So, Any other questions for Darren? Uh, need a, uh, do we got a motion? A motion and a second. Oh, we do. So I am on vacation now. <laughs> uh, any other questions, comments? If not, uh, those in favor of the uh, auditor to publish the request for proposals, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Item number eight are planning and zoning notices. Item A is the first reading and authorized county auditor to publish a notice of hearing to consider adoption of the 2012 International Building Code and amendments and additions thereto, the 2012 International Residential Code and amendments and additions thereto, and the 2012 International Existing Building Code and amendments and additions thereto. Pat Herman. Good morning, commissioners. Pat Herman with Minnehaha County Planning. Um, it's time again to readopt a new building code. Our last code is from 2009. A new addition has been issued for 2012. And we would like to go ahead and have this be the first reading um, for consideration of adoption of three new ordinances. Cindy read each of the code books that we would adopt. Those are the ones we traditionally use. It covers everything that's out in the county. Um, this would be the first reading and having the auditor publish notice for a public hearing and April 2nd at 9.15 for the adoption of the three building codes. Thank you, Pat. Move to <clears throat> any questions for Pat? I move to uh, authorize the auditor to publish. Second. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, publish. I do have one question, Pat. Um, we will get, will we get the, do the changes in the document? or? Uh, yes, you it, will. You'll get the whole ordinance and an explanation as well. And it's underscored and struck over? We can sure do that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> If not, we do have a motion to publish. Uh, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Item number nine is petition for compromise <coughs> of lien. John Peckus. Thank you, Cindy. This is on DPNO number uh, 10449 in the amount of $300. The applicant currently is attempting to um, uh, purchase a home, and during the course of the title search, it was discovered that there was a $300 lien against the property. Uh, that of course rested against both she and her ex-husband. Uh, the couple was divorced in August of 1989. The $300 county aid bill was actually incurred by her then ex-husband on uh, May 6th of 2001. So nice try, but uh, they were divorced. So uh, she is asking for the uh, lien to be released and uh, I'll make that motion and I'll also include the fact that the $300 lien should continue against her ex-husband. Second. We have a motion and a second to, uh, I guess, uh, allow, allow the 300 and have it continue against the ex. Okay, allow the $300 to continue against the uh, husband but be dropped against the uh, spouse. Any questions? I'm assuming that person's not here. So we have a motion. Uh, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Next is on uh, DPNO <coughs> number 61730 in the amount of $7,045.91. And this is a first. Uh, I've been doing this for quite some time. But uh, anyway, the applicant currently is asking for forgiveness of the county aid lien with a payment of $3,000. That's roughly 43% of the total lien amount. The lien uh, basically was uh, uh, composed primarily of poor assistance all the way through attorney liens uh, from the year 2007 through 2012. Uh, and uh, currently there is an upcoming felony trial scheduled for next month against the uh, applicant. The applicant is hoping to lessen her debt load with the release of her county aid lien as well as her plan to sell the home to her father, the co-signer on the mortgage. And then, of course, uh, uh, there would be a release from the obligation, which would happen with the refinancing. Uh, she is offering 3000 in payment in the hopes of clearing this debt. Uh, currently, she lists assets of $108,550, which includes her home and vehicles. Her liabilities, including the home mortgage, student loans, liens and judgments, total $170,000. The applicant recently began working for a local hotel and uh, that was about in mid-2013. She makes $8 an hour. She works roughly 32 hours a week. On her 2011 tax return, there was a $5,114 refund paid for pam family uh, necessities for her and her children, closing vehicle repairs and bills. She states that she is raising currently three uh, children. However, only uh, the ones that are 10 and 16 years old are listed on her tax return. The applicant is uh, uh, thankful for the assistance in prior years and she regrets not to be able to fulfill the entire amount and she's hoping that we will accept three thousand dollars the reason why this is unique is that i don't think we ever had a felony trial waiting in the wings but we were going to incur more expense with the potential for an appeal in the future that the county would be on the hook for so essentially she's threading the eye of the needle by being absolved of her responsibilities for a quick three thousand dollars and yet incurring more expenses while dumping her assets and uh, essentially she's making herself judgment proof. I, I can't make this motion. Yes, Commissioner Heiberger. A question for um, Mr. Peckis. I guess, I, you know, and you understand the law better than I do, but I looked right. at it as, as far as cleaning up the mess behind, getting $3,000, which we might not ever see otherwise, and then moving forward from this point. So tell me where I'm wrong in my thought process. Well, she has a $108,000 asset right now, and by getting her off of there and letting her dad take it over, in two months, we won't have any attachment except personally, not resting against any real property. Commissioner Kelly? I would move to deny. I'll second. OK. 
Okay, we have a motion I guess. to I, deny. I, not, I have a question for our state's attorney. And uh, go ahead. Was anything I said incorrect? Nope, that's correct. There's nothing to attach to once the father takes over the the uh, ownership of the home with the and what, what would you consider the person to be somewhat judgment proof then? It would be much more difficult to recover the full amount. Okay. In my opinion, it's just my opinion from what I know of the facts here. And and after and after the voucher is signed by the judge in the future, and let's say there's another thousand or two thousand dollars attached to this, she can still come back to us, can't she? That's right. Okay. I have a question, John, if I might. When I read through the application process, one of the things that was confusing to me is her tax return showed a home address that's different than the lien address. Yeah, and Are I we playing? Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that question. Mr. That Chair. makes no sense to yeah. me. Mr. Chair, that's the 2011 tax return, though. So that's I understand, but the issue is, is that she's asking for a lien a release on an address that she doesn't live at. Well, she may have lived there in 2012, though. That was 2011 mm -hmm. tax. Uh, that could be a good assumption, but I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't know. We know that for a fact. Seems like we're maybe playing games with assets a little bit. <clears throat> Is the applicant here by chance or a representation of that person? Okay. Mr. Chair? I am going to vote against the motion because uh, from from my perspective, if you look, most of these bills have been for poor relief and 3000 bucks today is, is better than uh, who knows if anything uh, down the, in the future. And so I, I would rather take the 3000 bucks today. Commissioner Kelly, <coughs> excuse me, Commissioner Kelly. Well, I, I think she's working the system. Um, I don't know what you know with the felony coming up and i believe that was a perhaps a joke charge was that correct John? it's a drug charge um i don't think at this time this is the kind of thing we want to forgive uh, yeah three thousand dollars three thousand dollars but i think there's a there's a point in time where you just have to say wait a minute you know this this is not right and uh and she should not be given forgiveness Commissioner Heiberger. I have a question for Kirsten. So if this house got foreclosed on, what would be the chances of us getting more than $3,000 out of this position? Without knowing the condition of the house or the value of it, I, I guess, I, I mean, I know the value of it is what is stated on the application. Um, I don't know. I'd just be speculating at this point, I guess. The, the, the thing that would, I guess, cause some concern, I think, would uh, Commissioner Peckis is saying is that um, there at least is a real asset to place a lien upon at this point once the father has sole ownership which is the goal here um, that won't be a possibility no matter what the value of the asset is so it's it's entirely possible that you wouldn't get it from it though Commissioner Barth you know, I think uh, there is, of course, another possibility, which is that we defer action on it. And, you know, as far as working the system, the system is paying her $8 an hour for 32 hours a week, which gives her no benefits whatsoever. Uh, she'll probably get better benefits being in our county jail uh, as far as health care, et cetera. Uh, I, I think maybe we should just ask her for a better offer at this point. At the same time, again, I, I don't think that... Uh, you know, the, most of those bills, again, are for poor relief. This person's life has not been that easy. And uh, 3000 bucks is uh, uh, certainly a, a significant amount of money for a person making $8 an hour. Commissioner Kelly? Well, um, I, I don't care what kind of offer she came back with, I don't, unless it was full settlement. I, I wouldn't be interested in supporting. And uh, the, big, the big elephant in the room is the felony charge hanging over and uh, you know we have at least if they go through the felony deal guilty or not guilty there's something to attach on the bills for the public defender's office and and uh, if we give it up to the father you know there are times when someone wants to get their life back together but not always does the county have to be the thing the, the entity that does that I, that's where family comes in a lot of times and 
and uh, sacrifice on the part of the individual. I commend her for wanting to get her life straightened out, but on the other hand, uh, I'm not sure that this is our obligation. Any other comments? Commissioner Heiberger? I'm going to support your motion um, rather reluctantly. I guess I'd come in after reading it thinking I would um, go with the compromise, but um, listening to arguments, I guess at this time I'm going to go with um, the motion and maybe she'll re you know come back again with a different author even after the felony case is done yeah. so any other comments questions uh, Cindy if you wouldn't mind rereading the motion so that we uh, have a clear if a yes vote is to decline the motion is to deny the compromise the request for compromise of plan thank you everybody understand I think we have a roll call vote if you would please Commissioner Barth no Heiberger? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Peckus? Yes. Benega? Yes. Motion uh, is a approved to decline the request. Now we have an opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone in the audience who would like to make any comments about an item on the agenda, any item other than what's on the agenda, they can come forward now. If not, we'll go to uh, item the first item in regular business item 10 915 a.m. is the time for a public hearing to consider the 2012 carryover supplements to various FY 2013 budgets Darlene Johnson Good morning Darlene Johnson from the Good morning, Office. Darlene. thank you for filling in sure um, the this is a public hearing and this is an annual request that we have for those expenditures that incur that were incurred in 2012 and not paid until 2013 uh, there were a few documents attached that were submitted by several departments. Um, we're requesting um, a supplement in the general fund of $130,889.78. Highway Department, $945,585.25, which included a number of projects that were contracted for in 2012 and have not been paid yet. Uh, emergency management, $11,693.52. Pass-through grants, $136,454.35. JAG grants, $47,142.82. The building fund, $68,923.98. Capital projects, $50,000. Any questions? Does anyone have any questions for Darlene? Oops. Commissioner Kelly? The pass through grants, no. Um, several of those um, CDBG grants, some of the pass through money that we send to um, Southeast Tech for several of those programs, that's part of it. Um, the other part is the juvenile um, reception, JABG grants that. For the reception center over at VOA. Okay, and these these are where we received the money already, and we haven't passed it on to the end. No, this we budget usually for those grants. When we receive the grant, we budget for the whole amount. This is the amount that's not been spent yet. Yeah. Uh, we have not received the dollars for that. But when it's we, not general fund money. It's it's. That's correct. Specific. Okay. Yeah, we receive the money because our the grant is in our name. And then we pass those funds through to a, a different agency. One other question. Yes. We were originally talking uh, in the terms of what a million and a half dollars, perhaps, that would be at, that we'd be able to, to at least consider putting into a restricted fund or a limited. I can't remember exactly. Is this going to eat that up, or is this was this figured in already? Um, no, that won't. Uh, we will be bringing something um, to the commission after Bob is back from, from his medical leave. Um, so no, this is the general fund portion of this is really quite small this year. Last year it was nearly 900,000. Yep. So this is okay, a fairly small amount with 130,000 for the general fund. So the other numbers don't affect what we were talking about That's there. That's correct. Thank you. 
if I remember right, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that million and a half dollar number that you used before was just an estimate of the correct. expense side of the journal. And right. we have not recorded the revenue side, so there could be a change in that number by the time we're done. Right, right. There is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions for Darlene? I think we need to break this down. Uh, I think we have between, to have proponents between and opponents. General, yeah, between the general hearing. and the uh, highway fund. But if there is any public comments or questions about the uh, presentation so far, that would be good. No, thanks. Yes. No, no, thank you. Okay. We'll move on to the uh, highway fund. Uh, is DJ here this morning? No, Tom will see Tom's, Tom's back. Here. I but see him. Do we have to make a motion? No. We need a motion. We need a motion. Yeah, we will get one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Morning, Tom. Good morning. Tom was the highway department. Um, the highway port department portion of it is mostly a project that we let last fall for two box culverts up on County Highway 121. The others are just our normal operating funds that we need that carry over from the year, for previous year. Anyone have any questions for Tom? Tom, I think one of the, when I looked at this, one of the largest uh, pieces of that, and I, as soon as I get done messing this up, was the uh, I can't get to it right now was about a five hundred thousand um, dollar item for I that showed a project number but yes. is the project number the Baltic Bridge no this those are two structures up on County Road 121 just north of Arrows data center okay so it has nothing to do with the Baltic Bridge not those no okay but I think that was over half of the request correct? that's probably over half yes yeah. That was 500, I, as I remember, it was 512 or something 501, like that. 501,000. Ah, found it. 500 and almost 502 of the 945. 502, okay. Any other questions on the highway portion? I believe we need two motions. Can we do it? to approve the resolution if, if everything's correct in the resolution. So we can do all of them at one time? Good. I'd make a motion to approve all of them. Second. Good. A second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any other comments or questions? If not, those in favor of the re resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you, Cindy. Mm -hmm. Item 11 is consider a motion to appoint Ryan Streff for a three year term to the City of Sioux Falls Solid Waste Planning Board, effective June 1st, 2013. Oh, yeah. Ryan Streff. Good morning, Commissioners. Ryan Streff, County Planning. Um, I just had a memo that I had uh, submitted to you regarding the appointment uh, of myself to the City of Sioux Falls Solid Waste Planning Board. I guess they just want to see some action so they can return that to the Mayor's office to say that, yes, I will serve on that board. And in the past, we've always sat on that board um, just looking at different uh, ordinance items and um, their single stream or their, uh, uh, their master plan for sustainability. So, Mr. Chair. Ryan's been an effective member of our planning and zoning, and I'm proud to not, uh, make a motion to approve his second. We have a motion and a second, and thank you for your work on that, Ryan. You have done a great job, and we appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, those in favor of approving Ryan's nomination signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously gives Ryan another function. <laughs> <laughs> Item number 12 is to authorize the chairman to sign construction and management services agreement in the amount of $119,092 between Minnehaha County and HDR Engineering for structure 50-194-059, the Baltic Bridge. Tom Wilsey. Good morning again, Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, this is for the construction management of the Baltic structure. This is, we like to use the same firm that does the design to do the construction management they're the most familiar with the plans and we reviewed the hours and very reasonable the hundred nineteen thousand dollars 
I'll make the motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other comments or questions about item number 12? If not, uh, those in favor of the authorization to uh, sign a construction management agreement, signify by saying aye. Aye. All the same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Item 13 is to authorize the chairman to sign construction management services agreement in the amount of $58,175 between Minnehaha County and Burroughs Engineering Incorporated for structures 50-240-069 and 50-240-073 on County Highway 121. Tom Wilsey. Once again, this is for construction management, and this is actually the project that we carried over from 2012. So for two structures up north. Thank you. Any is questions? There, is there one more bridge to build on, two, on 121? There are two more. They're going to be constructed there in the design phase right now. Are they going to, you don't know whether they're going to be culverts yet or not? Pardon? Are they going to be the box culvert too? Uh, it looks like they're going to be uh, bridges. Oh, There's okay. enough drainage that has come in between these that it's going to require a larger structure. One of them still got a 6,000 pound there's a three-ton bridge and a six-ton bridge up there. And we're trying to get all of these taken care of this year. So there'd be no limits? Or so that it'd be legal yeah. laws. Any other questions for Tom? Commissioner Heiberg? Just to comment that this, um, the one that we're approving today hopes to be completed by the middle of July. The number 13, the one that we're just talking about now, is July, if I remember correctly, 12th or 13th, somewhere in there. Yes, and then we we have it scheduled so that the other two will start immediately following that. Okay, very good. Any other questions or comments? <laughs> we have a motion and Make a, a motion. second. Make a motion, motion to approve. Second. Now we have a motion and a second <laughs> to approve item 13 for a construction management service agreement. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Item 14 is update and status report of the 88th legislative session on bills that impact Minnehaha County. Robert Wilson. Good morning, Commissioners. Robert Wilson, the Commission Office. Um, since the main portion of the legislative session wrapped up uh, this past week on Friday, I'm going to uh, uh, go through this uh, update a little differently than I normally do and just uh, update you on uh, some of the uh, resolutions and the items that uh, really were brought forward um, from the uh, SDACC from the beginning of the session and, and kind of how those ended up. And if you have any other questions on specific bills, uh, I'd be happy to, to answer those as well. Um, as you'll recall, there were three uh, main uh, initiatives or um, uh, ideas that came out of that uh, convention and the uh, the first was to that that really came from from Minnehaha County from uh, uh, from this commission was um, a, a mechanism for the state to pay criminal defense costs uh, uh, arising from uh, actions uh, out of uh, state uh, state institutions uh, and that had some some issues early on and, and did not even uh, make it into bill form. Uh, and I understand that there will be some, some conversations moving forward and, and there, there may be something uh, future on that, but that, that one was uh, uh, resolved fairly quickly. A uh, couple others, uh, Senate Bill 128 would have given counties the ability to restrict um, discharge of fireworks on the 4th of July uh, in, in the case where there were um, extreme fire dangers and emergency managers were seeing uh, this as a, as a real um, safety, uh, safety threat and an issue uh, around counties. That uh, was referred to Senate local government and was tabled uh, in, in Senate local government. That one uh, also was not uh, particularly successful. And then the fine, final uh, resolution that came out of the um, convention was uh, SB 129 that would have uh, restricted a, a TIF uh, TIF actions that if a uh, if a local government created a TIF, that the um, limits on the uh, um, property taxes, uh, the those uh, the TIF would only affect the local government that created the TIF. Where right now, if a, if a TIF uh, is created, the those restrictions are placed on the city creates it. It's placed on 
county portion of taxes, school district, townships, all of those that would uh, affect only the, the uh, entity creating the TIF and, TIF and that was also defeated as well. Um, just a couple other, one other bill of note is uh, that you brought forward the, uh, the, the um, association brought forward the, the <coughs> fireworks bill. A bill did pass and uh, I just noticed uh, was signed by the governor either this morning or yesterday the, allowing the discharge of fireworks up to the Sunday after the 4th of July. So that will uh, uh, go the, uh, actually go the other direction. Uh, and then obviously the, the last bill that we, was a, a big focus all the way th uh, in the early part of the session was Senate Bill 70 and some of the, uh, uh, the governors. Uh, Which one, Robert? Senate Bill 70, the uh, governor's criminal justice Re initiative that uh, was passed early on. So those were um, what, what I, just looking through, thought were a number of the, the bigger bills for, for us this session. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Questions for Robert, Commissioner Heiberger? Mine's a trivial question. Okay. On the fireworks one, if they can shoot off fireworks until the Sunday after the 4th of July, what if the 4th of July is on Saturday? Does that mean they only have the next day, or is it going to go for a whole week? I'm just curious. Is uh, going, just going back and reading the, uh, the language on that statute uh, this morning, it, it said the Sunday after the 4th of July. So if 4th of July falls on it's a Saturday, you've got one day. If it falls on a Monday, yeah, you've just, got seems crazy. Uh, almost another week. Yeah. Well, we are we creating job so, security for the police department. So the then county. if it's so then if it's on Sunday, it's done on Sunday. Except for the fact that we would then observe the 4th of July on Monday. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I think I lost control somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? For uh, another question, question for Mr. Robert. Uh, wasn't there a bill to allow for bonding on highway projects? And that may not have been a Minnehaha County bill, but wasn't that a SDACC initiative? Um, I, I'm, I'm familiar with the language that you're uh, uh, talking about. I don't I can find the bill number and uh, uh, well, later. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll check into that one for you. Any other questions for Robert? Thank you for keeping track of the legislative activity or lack thereof. Um, we appreciate your help. Um, we'll go to the county liaison reports. Does any of the commissioners have reports? Commissioner Heiberger? Just one comment. The highway intends to go back to their summer hours in April. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, any new business? Any old business? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Barr. in your absence, we approved a proclamation for St. Patrick's Day, and they asked for one of us to go down and read it. And if you're not going to go, I would hope maybe one of my colleagues here would go, because I'm not going to be reading it. I uh, have already been cornered and agreed to go <laughs> with the promise of free green beer. <laughs> so I think we're covered. Thank you very much, o Commissioner Obenega. <laughs> Who promised that? <laughs> I'm not telling. <laughs> I'm taking the fifth. <laughs> not literally. Just a quart. <laughs> really? Alcohol in a fifth? Yeah. <laughs> you caught that pretty quick. <laughs> Any other uh, comments, questions? If not, uh, we need to go into executive session for a legal briefing and contract negotiations. I'd like to recess, however, from potentially from the executive session back to the commission agenda. I'll make a motion to recess uh, for legal briefing and contract negotiations with the eye that we may come back out of exec. Second. Thank you. <coughs> Darren, can I talk to you? Do you have a question, Cindy? Darren. No. If not, we need a vote for executive session. Uh, those in favor of the item, please signify, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes.